Did you recently apply for a study permit for Canada and receive a refusal? Or is your agent telling you that you are too old to apply for a study permit in Canada? Or has someone told you that since there is a long gap since you finished your last uh, degree, you are no longer eligible to study in Canada? Do you fall in any of these categories? If so, don't worry. I have a top secret just for you, which worked for me and help me get my uh, visa after the age of 30 with over 10 years of gap since my last education in a college with just a one year degree and that too in a, a field that is neither related to my education or my work experience and the best thing not after it worked for me i recommend it for other people to do it and all of them were again a similar uh, complicated cases like me age over 30 long uh, a long gap since their last studies and applying to colleges and it worked for all four of them too so i'm pretty confident and that this is going to work for you too so stay tuned <laughs> My name is Sophia and welcome to my channel Sophia in Canada. Here I'll be discussing about my journey as an international student in Canada with 10 years of gap. So I finished my graduation in 2012 and after that I was working for 10 years and I wanted, I was in that stage in my career wherein I wanted to move to, uh, I moved to a different country and uh, get a different, uh, get an understanding of a different way of living. I wanted a better quality of life. So I decided to move to Canada. Now, just like you, when I first applied, a lot of agents told me that I'm too old to apply for a study permit uh, since it's been 10 years since my graduation. I can no longer apply the uh, for a study permit. And I was very, I was heartbroken. I uh, was in a, uh, I was very uh, sad that I would have to f abandon my dreams of moving to Canada because my express entry points were not that high. The only route available to me was through the study permit route. Now, uh, despite everyone's uh, advice, I did a lot of uh, extensive research. I went and read every piece of article that was there on the CIC website. And I realized that there is no such criteria. These are just notions or uh, concepts made by the agents because of uh, not just by analyzing trends of which visas were getting approved and which were not getting approved. IRCC does not have an age limit. There is no mention of how many years of study gap uh, you can, how many years of uh, gap you can have since your last uh, degree to apply for a study visa. A lot of agents will tell you that, you know, the maximum uh, gap that they can accept in Canada is five years. That's just a myth. That's wrong information. I'm living proof. I finished. I have a 10 year gap since my last uh, degree and I uh, got my study visa. I have successfully completed my degree too and I'm on my work permit now. So what did I do? So for me, I first, uh, I will not take the name of the company uh, agents, but it, I at first decided to apply through uh, one of the agents in India, uh, they are one of the biggest uh, companies. They, are, they have pretty, a pretty good reputation. So I thought, why? Not? And they don't charge anything, right? Because you sh uh, most of the time, guys, if you are applying for a study permit, your agent should not be charging you because when your college, uh, if you get admitted to a college and your study permit gets approved, the college pays the agent for getting them a student. So ideally, they should not be charging you because they are getting money from the college or the university that you got admitted to. So uh, yeah, these agents were not charging me anything and they told me they will uh, help me with uh, with my study visa application. So someone, I did not know anyone who was studying in Canada. I did not have 
friends in Ca uh, family in Canada. So this was something I was doing completely on my own from all the information I could find on find online on YouTube on the IRCC website. So I thought, okay, great. Let me uh, take the help of someone who's experienced, who's done this before, and that should help me with my visa. Like every other student, I applied uh, to um, I applied to the college. I fortunately have uh, had pretty decent scores in my recent scores and no backlogs in my graduation. So I got accepted uh, to the degree uh, to the course that I wanted to. I gave my IELTS uh, academic and I was happy. Uh, fortunately, I was able to get a bad eight. So uh, when the agent saw my file, though they have, first of all, a lot of agents said no. So a lot of, uh, I tried calling a lot of uh, agents across India to, to get an understanding of what their recommendations were and uh, what are my chances of getting the visa. So a lot of them said, no, you're too old uh, to apply for study permits. So your chances are next to impossible or it's been 10 years since you finished your graduation. So they do not accept a 10 year study gap. Um, a lot, uh, there was one agent who kept on uh, telling me that the only way I could get approved was if I did a project management degree from Algoma University. And that was my only hope. And I, when I did my research, research uh, uh, like nothing against the degree or the university it just didn't seem like the right fit for me and so I didn't want to spend so much or like all my life savings on something that I was not very interested in uh, my uh, my whole aim was not just to uh, not move to Canada with just any degree any college um, and you know just for the heck of it I wanted to uh, study something that I would find interesting that would help me enhance my skill sets and uh, my knowledge so after you know like having conversation I think with the over 10 agents I decided to go with this particular uh, company and they said that okay they gave me uh, they asked me to submit proof of funds uh, my AL score my mark sheets and uh, they gave me an, uh, a statement of purpose uh, written by some other for, written for some other student and they just told me uh, don't make any changes just follow this format and uh, put in your information and we should be good you have a very you have decent marks in your graduation you have a very good IELTS score so it should not be a problem so I was happy that at least these guys are uh, you know, happy to uh, take my case uh, now even while writing the SOP I wasn't very convinced that this is the right approach uh, because the persons whose SOPs uh, format I was following, she had done her BTEC in computer engineering. She was working with a tech company and now wanted to do a postgrad on a, on a computer related subject. However, for me, uh, my, uh, my journey is as wild and as crazy as I am as a person. So uh, I've done my BTEC in electrical engineering. I was working as an operations leader for American Express, so finance. And now I wanted to study entrepreneurial enterprise. So which is again, you might think, what is wrong with this girl? But yeah, I was, I am, um, I wanted to explore, I did engineering because my parents wanted me to. Um, I didn't want to st uh, work as electrical engineer. So I worked, uh, started working with American Express and moved up the ladder to become an operations leader and uh, realized that I wanted more from my life. I wanted to do something more exciting and I want to be my own boss. So I wanted to do entrepreneurial enterprise. And, but yeah, when I expressed these concerns to the agent, they said, no, don't worry. You have eight points. Your uh, finance is strong and uh, it shouldn't be a problem. So, okay, uh, since I didn't have any experience, I thought, okay, let me, um, let me listen to them and let me follow what they are saying. So I did. I applied for my study visa in June 2021 and on September 11th, 
uh, sorry, September 7th, 11th or 7th? I think September 11th, sorry, my bad. Yeah, on September 11th, 2021, I still can't, I still remember how, uh, what it felt. And if you have received a refusal, I know I've been there. I can totally relate to it. All I ask you is not to give up hope. So on September 11th, 2021, I was shattered. I received my, uh, I had applied for, um, uh, for fall 2021 intake so my classes had also started online i was in india and i was attending my classes online from september the 7th so after an entire week of attending classes on 11 september i receive a refusal that sorry uh, we are not convinced that you will return back to your home country furthermore the course that you've applied for is not relevant you know the most basic reasons why most uh, visa us get refused in India at least. I was very very depressed. Uh, I did not know what to do. I This was such a big uh, risk that I had taken. I had invested um, I had invested all my savings into this. I had a very well-paying lucrative job in India that I had res uh, that I had left to pursue this. Um, so I did not know what to do. I was very depressed. So of course, the first uh, route of action, of course, is to call the agent. Uh, I called the agent and I expressed uh, to them that, you know, this has happened. And that is when I realized that these guys are not the right people to take care of my file. Because uh, when I talked to them, they were like, as lost as me. They were like, oh, you have such a great IELTS score. Your finances are also great. Uh, we don't know why you got uh, declined. Just do something. Uh, right, we, let's uh, write another SOP and we'll launch your file again and you should be good. And that made me feel that these people don't really know what they are doing and even like before that there has been uh, a lot of issues uh, in the whole process like so many times when they ask for documents they themselves were not sure what documents to attach how to attach and i was the one who was you know watching youtube and telling them oh should i attach this i felt no i don't think these people are equipped or informed uh, enough to take care of my application i've given them the chance they did not and i'm someone who likes to get my stuff done by myself so i thought let it be I don't want to trust them anymore. I want to do this on my own. It, whether it works or it doesn't, at least I'll have myself to blame. So uh, I, the, so of course, and that is when I uh, started doing in-depth analysis of, I went on a lot of Facebook uh, uh, pages and forums, YouTube channels, assessing a lot of refusal cases. I started having conversations with a lot of people on this Facebook, group, Facebook groups who had received refusals too, so that I am able to analyze what is it that is leading to refusal for a study permit, especially for people who had a long gap since their last study or who were above 30. And that is when I realized that, you know, again, the only way to get an approval is to be able to convince the visa officer that you are not doing this degree just for the heck of it. You are actually invested and you have enough reasons uh, to be able uh, to come back to your country. Now, uh, let's start with the first reason that I received a refusal for ties to the country. Now, for ties to the country, most uh, people will ask you to attach property documents and show how much uh, money uh, or uh, you know, non movable, immovable assets uh, your family possesses, which uh, will be a deterrent for you to move to Canada. So, uh, I did that too, which I had not. Not done last time so I attached all the property that my dad had that I had uh, bought over the years and to show that yes these are the assets that we have as a family and if I uh, move to Canada it's not um, feasible, a feasible option for me because 
we have this much of property back in our home country. Now, the second thing that I did that I think really helped my case uh, before leaving my, especially if you are working to and planning to apply for a study permit, see if you can get this too, because I think that really helps uh, strengthen your case. So I reached out to my previous employer and asked them to write a letter of recommendation saying uh, what I was doing, how uh, and how um, no, I was being able to add value to the organization and how they would be happy to uh, absorb me back into the organization once I finished my uh, education in Canada. And I think that really helped. So if you want the format, I will be doing another video wherein I will be sharing my SOP, all the documents that I attached and the format. So basically, it's a letter from your employer saying, OK, this is what uh, Sophia was doing. These were her roles and responsibilities. And she was a wonderful employee. And once she's finished her studies, we would be happy to uh, we would be happy to work with her uh, if possible. Try and when when you're writing your roles and responsibilities, try and you know mold it in a way that it is uh, linked to your current uh, education. So, for example, um, I was doing my an entrepreneurial enterprise. So what I uh, did is I asked my leader to write on my letter how I am someone who is who was creative and had an innovative mindset because I was able to link and label that in my SOP that since I've always been someone with an innovative mindset, I want to do a entrepreneurial enterprise. I wanted to study entrepreneurial enterprise. So that yeah, if you can do that, that would be great. It doesn't have to match completely uh, your previous job role and your education, but see, uh, see if you can find some link and uh, emphasize on that. Now, apart from that, I also started. I also added a few, uh, you know, um, emotional factors in um, my SOP. So, for example, if you're able to write stuff like, you know, my dad has a government job, so it's not possible for him to move to Canada. My mom takes care of our family-run orphanage. So again, not possible for her to move to Canada. My brother works in India. He has a, a pretty successful career. So not possible for him to move either. So and me as uh, as the only daughter of in, of parents who've always supported and helped me, uh, leave, abandoning them to live in Canada is not is not even an option. Is something that I cannot do. So I have to go back to India. So that a is uh, a, becomes a strong reason why you need to go back to the country. B, the fact that you uh, already have have a job waiting for you in India strengthens your ties to the uh, country, right? So when I'm writing my SOP, I'll write that, you know, once I'm done with my education, uh, I would want to leverage the knowledge and come back to my organization uh, and uh, at a higher position. And I've already attached a letter from my employer saying, once I'm done with my studies, they would be happy to employ me again. So that shows that you have a reason to like, if you're not able to find a job in Canada, you have a job already waiting for you in India, so you will not stay illegally. You would rather move to a country, uh, move to your own home country, and pursue a good job. So that really helps strengthen ties. There are some other points that I mentioned too. When I do the video on the SOP, I will be taking you guys through it. Now, coming to the top secret document that uh, you guys must have been waiting for and that worked for me and for all the people that I recommended for is what we will be covering next. Now, um, before I get into that, let me give you a little bit of uh, understanding or logic behind how and why I think or thought at that point of time that this would work for me. And once it did, how, why it worked for other people too. So, uh, you know, when, uh, so what I tried to do is I tried to uh, think of my application from a visa officer's point of view. So I, I became when you know when I was assessing my documents, I became uh, I tried to you know embody the visa officer and think of all the reasons why I would want to refuse this guy, uh, this girl. Now, for someone like me, especially who had been working for a long time and suddenly decided to 
pursue um you know, uh, uh, studies, higher studies in Canada, it raises a lot of questions in the visa officer's mind because uh, A, they uh, wonder if your reasons to study are genuine. B, they are, uh, you know, uh, they are surprised that is this something that you're doing just to get PR in the country? Why this sudden interest to study after, you know, working for so long or uh, what is really going on here? Now, what really helps uh, your case in such scenarios is when you're able to convince uh, the visa officer that this is not a spur of the moment decision, this is not something you are doing just uh, to get into Canada, this is a well thought, well informed decision that you are making. So um, let's say if you take it from the visa officer's point of view, uh, the most common question that's supposed to arise in their mind is this person, especially for people like us, right, who are working for whom it's been a long time since their last uh, uh, last uh, course of study. Uh, it would be like, why, why do they suddenly want to study? What are their intentions? So you need to be able to show them that this is something that you are invested in and it's a well-informed decision. So what I would recommend in these cases is the, the magic secret document is if you are able to provide an internship document that is related to the course that you are planning to pursue. Now, why do I think that this doc, uh, internship document is important or why I think it worked for me or all the people that I recommend it to? Because A, it convinces the visa officer that you are not just selecting any degree, any random degree, uh, like a lot of people at times do, just to land in Canada. No, you are actually uh, serious about this de decision. B, it shows uh, the visa officer that before deciding to do this course, you already invested your time to learn more about this field of study and then decided to uh, pursue this career. C, uh, when you'll be writing your SOP, it helps you build a stronger case saying that, you know, this is something I have, this, uh, when I was doing my internship while working, I was able to uh, learn these uh, things or I was, I got to know about these concepts that really fascinated or intrigued me. And this is why I've decided to uh, leave my well uh, established uh, career and this, and I've decided to uh, study again. So that really helps you uh, convince the visa officer and helps you look like uh, a more genuine student than someone who's just selecting a random degree just to be able to uh, land in Canada. Uh, and I know internship letters are mostly not that difficult. So if you have a, a friend or a family member who has a business or, you know, just a, and it, it doesn't have to be a paid internship, right? Because if you are working in India, a chance, uh, like ch you, chances are that dual employment is not allowed in your organization, right? So just, you know, somewhere you can volunteer. Let's assume uh, you want to do digital marketing, walk up to any small company and see if you can help them uh, with their digital marketing. And if they are happy to give you uh, in, a certificate uh, saying that you were interned with them. Or for example, in my case, I did entrepreneurship. I wanted to do entrepreneurship. So I reached out to a small startup that one of my friends had and I helped told them that I'm going to, I can help you with these aspects. You don't have to pay me a single penny. All I want is a certificate uh, uh, mentioning that I worked with you guys uh, as an intern for and I helped you with these uh, aspects of your company. Uh, for my friend who was in, uh, visual, who wanted to do visual merchandising, he uh, reached out to a store and again helped, helped them with their layout and uh, the visual merchandising aspect of their company. And all they had to uh, wanted to do uh, had to do was provide a certificate. If the if it's a very small company and they don't have a certificate. Um, and they don't know how to get your certificate, you can just go to canva.com and get the certificate format and help them with it. But just ensure what I would recommend is don't make fake documents. Uh, ensure that it's a proper registered company with proper business number and stuff because 
if the visa officer tries to verify, the information should be verified. So ensure that it's a legit company and just reach out to any small company and see if they are offer them some value or some work that you can do for them free of cost just for an internship certificate. I think that helps to make or break your case. If you're able to show that, that shows the visa officer that before you applied for your study visa, you already did an internship or on this on a similar thing with a company, learn from them, help them. And when while doing this, you realize that yes, this is the right uh, fit for me. This is the career that I uh, want to pursue. And thus, I want to study in Canada, not just because I want Canada PR, right? So I think that document really, really helped. Uh, and if you want to know more about how to write the perfect SOP, addressing all the most common reasons that visas get refused, I, I, may, I have attached the link to my other video where I take you uh, through uh, all the documents that I attached in my visa file. I show you my SOP with all the points that I have reached uh, along with a few suggestions that you can do to make your case stronger. So that's all for this video. I will be making a lot of videos on my journey in Canada, how to apply uh, the whole study permit process, the work permit process, how I landed a job with one of the biggest uh, companies in Canada. And um, stay tuned. <laughs> I am hoping to get to know you guys more in the comment section. If you like this video, please like, comment and subscribe to my channel and stay tuned. Bye-bye. Also, before I go, I also want to let you guys know that I didn't fly to Canada alone. I flew to Canada with the love of my life. That is this little boy, Romeo, and we flew together to Canada. And if you also want to uh, move to Canada with your pet, uh, I also will be making another video on how to fly to Canada with your pet. I did not use any agent or any consultant. I did this all on my own and Sir had a very comfortable flight and we traveled and came in together. And yes, bye bye for now. Bye.